consider these words from the Collect, wherein we ask God, who declarest thy almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace, that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises, and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Once again, this collect is kind of a follow-on to the last few weeks' collects. First, we acknowledge God's power, which is manifested not in terror, but in mercy and pity on our failures. We should note that God has chosen to show kindness and mercy to us, not the punishment that we truly deserve. In this mercy, he shows his almighty power. It is important to note that having all the power in all the universe, in and of the universe, God manifests his power by showing infinite mercy and kindness to us, not in causing us more tears. He does not act like an imperfect human would in his position. Most humans are not capable of showing such kindness and mercy to others without the help of the Holy Ghost and God. God is far kinder to us than we possibly could deserve. He provides us the ultimate example of how we should act when great power and responsibility are given to us to handle. Like the Sermon of, the, of Matthew chapter 18, verse 23, we, too often we act irresponsibly with said power and responsibility. Given our fallen nature, we choose to cause misery rather than kindness. We must resist this choice and show kindness to others rather than misery. However, if we are truly God's God, however, if we are truly are following God's will, then we will choose to be kind rather than evil and do good deeds with the help of the Holy Ghost and resist our fallen nature. This leads into the collect. Thus, the collect goes on to ask his help in following his commandments so we might gain good which comes from following his will. This is a unifying theme throughout a lot of the collects for a good reason. In order to get the good which comes from following him, we first need to follow him. We cannot achieve good results if we do not follow him. Following requires active action as, in, as opposed to passive action. Action, not just diction, is the tagline to many of my sermons go. We should recognize the good which comes from acting and choose to continue to act for him as opposed to our natural tendency to go astray. Following his commandments is a sure way to stay on the course set for us if we follow his scriptures and his commandments and take them to heart. We have to not just talk the talk, but actually walk the walk. It can be extremely difficult, but this is what God has called us to do. He calls us to perform actions in alignment with his word in order to spread his word. We cannot effectively spread his word if we are not in alignment with his word. The reason we have trouble with this is that we are imperfect creatures with not just free will, but manifold, perhaps rampant free will. The norm is to choose what we want, not what we need. Then we come to calamity. We are each grievous sinners, some worse than others, none better. Yet we all come before God equal in our sinful state. In equally big trouble, some more, none less. We are all equal by virtue of the fact we are hopeless sinners without the saving grace and faith of Christ. It is only through his faith we are saved. Not our faith, but the faith of Christ who dwells within us. This is the point that St. Paul is making when he says they first gave unto us that understanding he got directly from God as to the role of Jesus Christ. He recounts some of the factual information about Jesus' time here on earth after the crucifixion, the descent into hell, and the resurrection. 
He confirms the story of the gospel as told to him. He notes the various witnesses, some still alive or recently passed away. He makes the point that we must propagate the gospel so others might be believed. In order to truly spread the gospel, St. Paul infers our actions must be congruent with scripture. He tells us we are saved by faith alone. The point is that we need to make sure our actions lead people towards God and Jesus and not away from them. Our faith partly, but chiefly and not first. Then by whose faith are we saved? We are saved by the perfect faith of Christ, our only mediator and advocate before the Father. It is not by our faith, but the faith of him who dwells within us, that of Christ. Without Christ, we could not have any faith to begin with. The perfect faith of Christ allowed a single sacrifice to be made one time to cook the books and account for the sins of all mankind for all time. His is a faith which saves us, and our faith in him allows him to operate in us. Because of their refusal to allow him in, those who do not have the Holy Ghost in them do not believe in him. The Holy Ghost will not enter into those who disavow him. God will not force his way in. We have to ask him first to enter, then only then will he enter. God does not force his way on people, and neither should we. If people refuse, then we should, to paraphrase Jesus, shake the dust off our shoes and let them be. We are not called to force our beliefs on those who do not want to hear them. That would be contrary to his message. Another thing to consider is Jesus is real. He is who he says he is. He is not a fictional character. He is not a great teacher. He is the Son of God, and he came to save us, body, heart, mind, and soul. There is no way, other way to view him that makes as perfect sense as this. If that is not enough to turn your heart, consider the parable of the pub publican and the Pharisee, related by St. Luke. The man who was proud of his performance was not the example Jesus chose for the one justified, rather than the one who acknowledged his failures and asked God for forgiveness and help. This is to point us at, to an example of who he should be like. It can be said with confidence it is not the Pharisee. Think of those examples and who would we rather be like, a publican, the publican, or the Pharisee? Remember, the Pharisee's job consists of finding clever ways around 613 Mosaic laws. The publican was looking for help and actually following too. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second was like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And just as importantly, he was not looking for ways around those two laws. He is looking for help to follow God and forgiveness when he fell short. In our day-to-day -day lives, let's strive to be more like the publican and less like the Pharisee. Let us follow the publican's example and look for help to follow God and ask for his forgiveness when we inevitably fall short. Let us ask God for the help we need to follow his will, for we must have his help to act as we must here on earth. Action counts, for by their actions ye shall know them. How does it have an uphill trail? The easy downhill trail does not lead to the summit. Time is now, not tomorrow. Time has come indeed. How you act it is by our actions we are known. Be of God, live of God, act of God.